Well, welcome everybody. So happy to have you back with us for another one of our Connected Women of Influence online forums. I'm really excited to hand this off to my partner in crime, uh, business strategist, Sean Marie Turry, who is going to lead us through her segment called Truth is the New Black, a conversation series. And this is a, gosh, when you're with Sean Marie, she just... She just takes a deep dive um, head first into the, the deep end. And so it's going to be a captivating, juicy, honest conversation. I'm so excited to hear what she's going to lead us into. So I'm just going to turn it over to you now, Sean Marie. It's all yours and just take us where you're going to take us. We'll be, we'll be uh, brave and we'll go along with you. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Patty. And I, I love being your partner in crime with Connected Women of Influence and doing these online forums. And it's such a treat to, uh, to be able to have these conversations with some really incredible women. And today is no exception. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled to introduce uh, my dear friend and my very special guest today, Trisha Grace. And Trisha is the founder of TrishaGrace.com. It is a lifestyle brand. She is a designer and creator and a absolute force to be reckoned with. And she's joining us today from her gorgeous atelier. And you can see behind her uh, some of her absolutely beautiful, beautiful collection. Uh, from TrishaGrace.com and the Trisha Grace Collection. And Trisha and I, uh, we've known each other for about eight years, I believe it is, Trisha. I think that's uh, right. Unbeknownst to Trisha and I, uh, we came from a very similar background. So uh, 25 years ago, was it, Trisha? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think 25. 20 yeah, about 20 or 25 years ago, Trisha and I were both in the fashion industry, and we were both selling to the same buyers, uh, representing different lines. Our paths never crossed, but then all this time, you know, fast forward, our paths crossed, and we meet and come to find out we were working with the same buyers, working in the same industry, and we had all these really incredible things in common, and uh, and at the time, uh, when I was in the fashion industry, when I closed my business, I said, never again, um, <laughs> never say never. <laughs> and Trisha also left the fashion industry and uh, created another incredible business called Muse Kitchen, which maybe she'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but here we are, and today we are talking about the power of the second act and the beauty of the second act. And we're introducing a term called perennials, which is something that I've just recently uh, been hearing about. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But today our topic is really about women who are entering their second act or maybe their third or fourth or fifth act. But the idea is this, beauty and the power of reinventing ourselves and connecting to something that we're passionate about um, at any age. And Trisha and I have been talking a little bit about, you know, that women of a certain age uh, means it could be women who are 20 or 50 or 70. And we've been together discovering these really phenomenal women who are reinventing and re-blooming and rediscovering um, this next act. And so, Trisha, I would love to hand it over to you and talk a little bit about how you found your way to Trisha Grace and founding this beautiful company and getting back into fashion after leaving fashion, much like I did. Um, and tell us a little bit about you and your company and what it means for you to be in this next act and what it means to be, what being a perennial means to you. Well, first of all, Shavri, thank you so much, my dear friend, for having me here today. And Patty, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, you know, I was in the garment industry in my 20s till I was 30 and retired at about 35 after a very successful career to raise my family because that was my focus. I have three beautiful daughters and I, when I retired, I was, as John Reese said, 
I'll never go back. Don't ever ask me to go back. That is that business is just for the young, you know, that, you know, it's a very rigorous, tough schedule to, you know, and uh, lifestyle to chase after. It's a lot. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. So I, um, you know, had started a, a company called Sparkle Sanctuaries with another dear friend of Sean Marie's and mine. And it was an event company that was just fabulous. And from that, I started um, cooking classes out of my home and teaching the art of cooking. And so I did that just, you know, not too seriously, but for fun and just to share my passion and art while I was raising my family. And after 25 years of marriage, I was 55 years old and went through a divorce and sat really quiet for a year and was like, now what am I going to do? You know, I have to do something. And the cooking thing at the time was just kind of hard because it's a very physical labor of love. And I was like, what do you do best? And after a year, <laughs> my answer was, <laughs> no, you really know the garment industry, you know, the fashion industry. But what really drove me to go back into it wasn't the fashion industry it was really um being a 55 year old woman mm. starting my life over um you know getting comments from people i was collecting a lot of vintage wear and wearing it and getting comments from women of oh my gosh that's so flattering for you know women of our age and you know, that, that looks, so, it looks so youthful and you look so young and, and flat, it's so flattering. And I really started to think about it and I was watching women running around in their yoga wear and their pants and really not getting dressed. And I just was inspired to do this old Hollywood, bring back classic body styles that are great for any shape or any body and put it in colorful prints. And, you know, it's just kind of, had legs of its own just because of the passion that I had back to women for mm -hmm. the collection. But for me, it was a deeper meaning behind it. And as Sean Marie had also said, like we've been kind of diving deeper into our businesses uh, collectively together and really examining the women out there um, that are at the stage of life or, or at any stage of life. And after, being in business for, for four years and because my collection does appeal to younger women in their 20s and 30s, um, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting the momentum out there, even though I was selling to the younger um, customer. And I really, I really figured out that um, just in the last week or so with Sean Marie that my customer is a 50 plus woman. And that 50 plus woman, I'm not the only one out there that like wants to feel sexy and beautiful and playful and wear color and, but have my arms covered and not have, you know, my chest really showing so much and to cover up the parts, you know, I'm 61 years old next month and I, which is you know, <laughs> which I just like really thought about it and I'm like I developed this brand for women like myself and then uncovered this beautiful community of women that are all on their second act it's like you know because of our self-care because of we stay fit and we're you know mindful about our lifestyle and things like that you know we have a lot of energy and we're not done yet and we have more work to do mm -hmm. and I think that um you know, for me, yeah, it's my brand, but, and it's clothing, but my clothing is kind of a vehicle to get to women to share the deeper story, to go deeper with these women. And as I have looked further into this community of women, I've really noticed that, um, wow, they're bold and they're badass and they've got something to say and they're really not afraid to say it. And they do say it and they just, they're just living their best life, they're living their true lives. You know, some of them have, all their stories are different, but what they have in common is they're not 
at this point in life not afraid to own who they are and what they're doing and how they're going about it. And they're getting huge momentum behind them to really get their story out there and tell their tale of what their second act looks like. And that really, um, that really fuels me in a lot of ways of really being able to feel that and see that. And I just love, um, watching, you know, getting deeper into this community and watching it. So, I mean, for me, um, I feel rejuvenated in being able to have the honor to do this collection. Um, you know, right now it's clothing. Um, I've had the opportunity to also add to my brand um, cooking classes and retail for that. And I want to make a full lifestyle brand for women and really have a, a platform to speak to women about feeling beautiful for themselves and what that means to them. Mm. And that all of our, you know, we go through hormonal changes and, and our faces change and our bodies change and really embracing the beauty in that so that, um, you know, the clothing is just a re for me, my clothing to women is just a reminder to, uh, of, feeling beautiful for themselves first, like really finding their inner beauty and having something that they can put on that is kind of their, you know, uh, Wonder Woman cape or, you know, just where they put it on and they just feel beautiful. And it's just like little girls playing dress up, but we're all, you know, women in our, you know, for I would say mid forties up because I've, you know, I have clients in here that are 70 years old that look fabulous. So mm -hmm. Um, so so it's let, just, let me ask you this. What, what would you say to women who, um, again, are women of a certain age and for their industry, um, because that's one of the things that you and I talked about that, you know, there's this whole concept of women aging out and right. it's different in different industries, right? I mean, and, and one of the things that you and I are both really embracing that we're super grateful for is that there's been this really big, uh, there's been this big arc that's happening that we are seeing, like you said, like there are women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s who are now major brand influencers. And Michelle Pfeiffer um, just came out with her own line of perfume and, um, and she's doing this. That's the other thing too that I think is really interesting is how many, um, women are embracing entrepreneurship from the arts you know that there are women who are finding their their voice as business women um mm -hmm. who you know years ago would have been dismissed like oh you're an artist or you're a poet or you're an actress you know stay in your lane and so right. I think there's this really beautiful thing happening but one of the things that you and i were chatting about trisha was this idea that you know in the modeling industry you know women used to age out in their 20s, you know, and, uh, you know, ballerinas, their feet give out, and massage therapists, their backs give out, and, you know, there's this whole, the idea of, of being a woman of a certain age, or, you know, being an actress, and you can't play the sex symbol anymore, because you're now playing somebody's mom, you know, thank goodness that that conversation is changing, but I still feel like there are a lot of women who want to embrace something, want to, you know, create their version of TrishaGrace.com, that they have a fashion icon inside of them, or they have a writer or a graphic designer or, um, you know, a chef. I have no idea. It could be absolute. I mean, it's limitless. But what would you say right. to who are feeling apprehensive or feel like, it's too late for them or that time has passed them by or they missed their opportunity. Like how do you go from a state of feeling left behind and afraid to find the audacity and the boldness to be like, you know what, I'm going to go for it. Like what, what do you think that, you know, what bridges that gap? Well, I really feel that the number one factor is to really sit with yourself and figure out how to move fear out of your way. Because fear is just paralyzing and self-talk is super important. 
And, you know, and I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I, I started this at 55. I'm 61. I'm, you know, just working on like within this business, like my fourth turn in it to figure out what I have to do to make it successful. And it's scary. I invest, and I took my retirement, invested my entire retirement in it because I believe in it and I believe in myself and I still haven't turned the corner yet and it's scary. So, you know, the biggest part for me is I've had to really figure out every day of waking up and putting the fear aside, you know, and figuring out what to do with that fear. And personally, what I do is I replace it with, you know, most people give up, would have given up six months or a year ago. And it's the people that succeed that stay in it through the fear and keep trying new methods until mm -hmm. they find what it is that is going to make them successful at it. And, you know, society has told us before, like, oh, well, you know, I'm a grandmother of two, I have two grandsons, I have three grown daughters. It's like, oh, well, you, you know, now, you know, the pattern in society has been before of like, well, you should be retiring, you, you know, you'll be 65 soon, you should be retiring. And, you know, I think for my generation of women that are starting over again, I'm starting over again financially and emotionally and within personal relationships, I'm single. You know, I mean, a lot of women would, you know, there's days I wake up in my dating world and say, oh my God, like I'm 61 years old. Like I'm, it's kind of late in the game to like find somebody to share my life with, you know? I can come with the negative and the fear and bring that, you know, and, and have that. And then all I would do is marinate in that. So I, if my, my advice would be to try to figure out how to move the fear aside and really go down to your gut to figure out what it is that fuels you, what it is, what it is that's going to be your second act. What do you have to say? Mm. And I think that um, probably five years ago, this surge of women going back to your conversation about the, the models, um, all of the brands are making these campaigns to bring the Cindy Crawford's back, the, you know, uh, Twiggy or, you know, these mo models that are now in their 50s, 60s and, and even 70s and they're doing these whole campaigns. All the fashion, all the fashion is bringing back these brand name models and, and saying, look at these women and how beautiful they are. There's a whole essence of timeless and agelessness within, I believe, in our generation that is going to forge a new path. It's going to be uncomfortable for the forerunners in that. But I think that the, the generation right behind us, it's going to become the norm within the next five to 10 years mm, within every, that. within every industry of like, what are you going to go do? I'm just now getting started. Like we've got work to do girls. Yeah. And part of what fuels me is, you know, I don't have all the time in the world, so I got to get after it. Like, you know, I, it is my second act. I'm starting from nothing, but, you know, just stay out of the fear. And, and also the time element kind of like fuels me up. It's like, you know, I got a good 10 years here, 15 years here to fire this thing up and really make a difference deeper than just selling a garment off of a rat, off of a hanger. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in really being able to get in front of women like I am today. And, um, and in my atelier that I have here in West Hollywood with private appointments of really digging deeper and really going to the core of, yeah, we, you know, these are our changes. Let's embrace, embrace them and feel beautiful about it because we are beautiful, you know, and, you know, we don't want to look 20. We, we want to look mature and beautiful. You know, we were already 20, but like some women are sad about it and, or someone to feel like, oh, I could just wear black because I've got 10 extra pounds on. Or, you know, or it's not age appropriate to like your fashion role. Well, there's a way to do it, you know. But it's more just about, I'm more concerned about how women feel inside, you know. And I think that that 
I think there's a lot of brands out there that are um, in this day and age. So, you know, I, when, when I first saw the topic, you know, that Sean Marie sent on this and the idea of perennial, I, I just love that word. I'd never heard it until I yeah. saw the write up for this. And, um, I, you know, I, I think I'm on like my third act now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, you know, my, my first marriage ended when I was 42 and started all over. I mean, lost everything except all the debt and the kids and the responsibilities. I lost everything else. And so I had right. to start all over again. And, um, and I think that was a, it was a good mindset to develop like, okay, well, what are you going to do? You have, you either sit down and have a pity party and woe is me and try to find someone to take care of you. Or you say, all right, what am I going to do now? You, you step up to the plate and you try to figure it out. Um, but it is a, it seems to be a pervasive mindset. This I'm too old. It's not age appropriate. It, it whatever that is, because, uh, and I guess that's just been, it's just in our DNA maybe that we need to try to drive out. I decided to go back and get my graduate degree. And I, I was in my, I was 50, I think when I decided to go back and I'd hemmed and hawed and like, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And I don't know. And I made the comment to a friend of mine. I said, well, I, I think I'm just too old. And she said the smartest thing anybody's ever said to me. She said, well, how old will you be if you don't? Mm. <laughs> That's brilliant. What? How old will you be if you don't? That's right. I mean, seriously, I have chills. That was brilliant. Yeah. I'll either be 53 with a graduate degree or I'll be 53 without one. I'll That's still right. be 53. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, what a great comment. Yeah. And that that's the whole thing is we have to change our paradigm in how we think, how we feel, uh, and what we do with that. And you're exactly right, Patty. It's like, is it in our DNA? Surely it is, because that's what our grandparents said. That's what our parents said. And it's time to change our DNA of thinking. And it's time to really change the paradigm and that also takes a lot of work i mean and, or, and and that's something that i've been that i personally recently have been struggling with of like really get my mantras down and not let that oh my god i'm too what you know thoughts are things whatever comes out of your mouth mm -hmm. is reality so you know not saying oh i'm too you know sometimes i say it jokingly like i tell my kids you want me to do that i am elderly that's what i always say <laughs> to i am elderly <laughs> and they you look at me that and like, when it's appropriate <laughs> yeah they laugh they go oh great well you just ran five circles around us and this is elderly yeah. but like that's the thing is it's like we have to stop joking about it and thinking about it in those terms and canceling those thoughts when they come out it's normal to have those thoughts because that's fear creeping in and, and, um, you know, and just canceling them and say, no, I've got this. I've done it before. I think there's also with these women out, these, uh, uh, perennial, you call them perennial. Yeah. The perennial women. Yeah. Perennials, the perennials out there. I think that a lot of it too for them is, is, we have the history of doing something before we also you know we have knowledge that comes with us that that gives us uh the fortitude to do it um we have the history of being successful or failing you know we know what a lot of those things feel like and it's kind of like an exercise like once you've gotten through it and you know and you've been on the on different sides of it you kind of become fearless in another way if you're able to get the fear set aside of like you know what what's the worst thing that happens i fall down and skin my knees they heal you know <laughs> get up again and go do it so um i think there's a lot to be said i think that a lot of women that are deciding to do that is also like you said patty is really out of pure need of having to support ourselves mm -hmm. and to take care of ourselves there's that fuel um and there's also the fuel of like 
having the comfort of knowing that we reinvented ourselves before and that we could do it again. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Trisha, you know, you, when you were talking about, you know, the, the thoughts are things and, you know, that what we think is what we tend to create. I just included in the chat. Um, I was trying to include an image, Patty, and for some reason it's not letting me attach it, but it's a quote by James Victory, who is an artist, and his mantra is, um, have dangerous ideas. And he is an artist in his 60s, and he's pretty fabulous. And, uh, but as we know, you know, there's been, um, you know, this tendency where, you know, men get more distinguished as they get older. And, you know, and James is definitely one of those people. Plus, he's an artist, and he's, he's very cool and rebellious, and he does this um, really thought-provoking work. But his quote is, whatever you practice comes back to you, so be careful what you practice. And I was just like, gosh, that's just so, that's so true. So what are we practicing? You know, what, what are our you know, daily mantras, what are the things that we are saying to ourselves? And, you know, um, Trisha, one of the things that, that you and I, and I think I also shared, let's see here, I did, I also shared in the chat, um, I shared with Trisha earlier today, a woman that I discovered named Sarah Mai. Um, her, her birth name is Sarah Jane Adams, but she goes by Sarah Mai, and she's a a jeweler. She makes this really funky, really cool jewelry. Um, but she has become a brand ambassador. She's been a brand ambassador for Adidas, I think, for about five years. And she's 65, has this gorgeous white hair. Um, she's a mother of twins and um, who are now probably, Trisha, the same age as your daughters. Um, and it, she's just doing these really incredible things. And, and she she calls them, uh, Patty, do you know what they call, I think they call them trainers. They call, that's what they call sneakers in England. I think they call them trainers, but mm. she doesn't own any high heels. She doesn't own anything black, but she wears these super funky trainers and Adidas shoes and these track suits and these overalls. And, uh, Trisha, who was the other one that you said it was Icon Accidental? Was, yeah, Icon Accidental. And she is just fabulous. I mean, and she's just a force to be reckoned with. I mean, she just started like doing live videos and the next thing she know, knew she had got this huge following. I can't, I don't know what her background is per se on what her first act was, but now she's like, does all, gets all these sponsorships from all these brands. Um, and now she has this cute little assistant that follows her around with the camera and just videotapes her cuteness during the day of just, or, or taking pictures of her. And she's and you, beautiful. Patty, do you, I mean, Trisha, do you know how old she is? I want to say she, I mean, I think she might be close to 70. I mean, she's at least 65 plus. And, you know, and I wanted to say something to you, Trisha, that you were talking about just as far as like, you know, I love that you said that for you, it's really about women being comfortable and feeling sexy or glamorous or confident or, or whatever it is, but that they, that we, um, you know, that we put some effort back into, you know, taking responsibility for the way that we feel, you know, well, right. and if you, you know, and I think we've talked about this too, Tricia, one of the things that I know for me that if I'm feeling, you know, out of sorts or frumpy or I'm not feeling like making sales calls that day or I feel I don't feel like going to an event, what I'm wearing can absolutely change my entire day. And whether it is, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, I mean, I could be in, you know, overalls and flip flops and a cute little tank top and be really casual, but have some really sexy panties on or put on a really great lipstick and it can just change everything yeah. so right. I think, you know and especially trisha with with what you do specifically with fashion and with apparel and with textures and with colors you know i just think that it's it's it plays such an important role but i would again whether you're with us live or if you are watching the recording i really hope that you'll take the time 
to check out Trisha's Instagram page and check out Sarah's page and check out Icon Accidental and, and look at what some of these women are doing. And in this particular conversation, obviously we're talking about women who are, you know, 50 or older. But the point is, is that it is this courageousness and this willingness to just put it out there. And if I, if I understand correctly, the um, Icon Accidental she fell into this like people would stop her on the street and say are you you know an elderly model are you you know do you you know model for certain brands and she wasn't a model she just had this real sense of style yeah and i'd love for you to speak a little bit to that trisha like how how does somebody go about finding their sense of self or their sense of style like if someone's like I don't have a clue. Like I just prefer to wear black or I just prefer to stick in my sweatpants. Like right. what would you say to someone who is wanting to find, you know, this, this sense of identity through what they wear and why they wear what they wear, but they, they just feel stuck. Like what would be a great place to start regardless so, of what their age is? First of all, you made a really good point when you, you're, you know, you're consciously thinking about, you have, you have the mindset when you get up every day, what it is that you're connected to it, of what it is that's going to actually put your little bounce back into your step. But a lot of women aren't, you know, but whether they are or whether they're not, whatever it is that they put on dictates how they're going to go into the world. And I, I could remember my whole life, I would get dressed up to go to the grocery store and people would be like, all the other women were like in pajama pants and sweats and they're like, oh, you must have an important meeting today. And I'm like, yeah, at the grocery store, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because I, you know, for me, I can't think straight unless I'm dressed. So it's imperative for me and how I dress will actually set the direction for the day. And, um, and, and a lot, even if I don't have anything that's necessarily fancy on, I always have something beautiful on underneath. You mentioned panties. My whole thing is vintage slips that I hand over dye. And I actually have a collection of those. And I kind of went back to my thinking of how women were in the forties and fifties. What did they have? They had a vanity what was on their vanity. They would have their lipstick and their face care and maybe light a candle and always have a glass of champagne. And they not only dressed, you know, and they would sit down there, but what that was, was that was their time. You know, so putting on their makeup is to reflect on their day or look forward or look backwards. And they would do, they would go through the same process of, from the daytime they would go through the same process at night and actually have as big of a wardrobe in their closet for nightwear as they would day wear. And they would pick out a beautiful outfit to, put it, you know, to wear a negligee over at night. And yes, was it sexy and beautiful, but it was a, it was a lifestyle back then. And I actually have a full collection of, uh, you know, women's lingerie that I style women in for streetwear that they wear out with little denim jackets or to have something at night because most of the sexually sexy lingerie now that you can find isn't body appropriate for women our age. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the women back then, they had bumps and curves. They weren't working out at the gym. They weren't watching <laughs> what they ate. They were living their lives and actually doing it right, you know, because that's what we should be doing. Um, so I think that small steps, it's not, it's like pick, I talk to women when I, you know, they, I come up and saw, you know, and most of them will say, well, I don't wear color. That's the first thing that comes out of their mouth. And for me, I'm like, okay, then we're going to, then whatever you pick from me is going to have color in it. I'm not going to let you pick something drab. So I would say just step out of your box and pick a color that you haven't worn before that looks good on you. And I think that it could also be as simple as pulling out a pair of earrings or oh, never leaving the house without lipstick. You don't have to have eye makeup on or face makeup on. 
But if you have lipstick on when you leave, you feel dressed and you feel fresh. Um, and you look presentable and beautiful. Even if you have something that's not even dressy on, if you have a pair of earrings and lipstick, then it changes your outlook of how you're going out because you have a little something. Mm. So I, that would probably be my, my go-to is just change one thing up that's simple for you to change, whether it's add color, add an accessory, put on lipstick mm -hmm. and feel it. You know, allow yourself to feel it in the inside, whatever that change is, and then just keep adding to it. Allow yourself the freedom of stepping outside of your own box, whatever that is. And, you know, and I think a, a great a great place to find um, inspiration is Pinterest or Instagram. And, you know, I'm going to go back to Sarah Mai for a minute. I mean, she, she doesn't wear... Um, she doesn't wear heels. She, I think she might wear uh, kicks or sneakers or whatever she calls them or Birkenstocks. Um, but she has these fabulous jeans and these gorgeous jackets and these Indian saris. And, uh, and she had this Adidas jacket on with this, uh, I think it was a red Adidas jacket with this black and white printed skirt and like a red bandana in her hair and so the and the reason I'm only bringing that up is because if your style you know is flaps and overalls or t-shirts that you print on or old rock and roll concert t-shirts or great big hoop earrings or you know going the you know free to callow route and putting flowers in your hair just you know I, I think Trisha what you really remind women of is like just take a chance and I'm looking in the in the video behind you that the over to I guess it would be your left that black and white polka dotted dress um mm -hmm. which you saved me from a completely disastrous night and <laughs> I called you in an emergency and you met me at the atelier and you dressed me um <laughs> So just so you ladies know, basically the ass tore out of my pants and I was going to a movie premiere and uh, I was in real trouble. So Trisha saved me and dressed me and it was absolutely stunning. But I, I, I think what you're saying, Trisha, is really great. Like just start with one thing. And Patty, something I thought that you might speak to because I think that, like you said, that you might be on your third or fourth or fifth act mm -hmm. um, but I know that you are also going through a really interesting uh, transition and you know and finding your next act mm -hmm. um, but before we talk about that I just I wanted to just read this since we were talking about um, the the art of being a perennial and the beauty and the power of being a perennial and I actually heard of this uh, there's a woman who really coined this phrase because she is on her second act. She was a big wig in the tech industry in San Francisco, uh, left that, came to LA and started a company with her friend called The What. And it's basically, you know, the what's hip to watch or wear or read or where to go eat. Um, and they've started this community of, I don't know, I think they have like a half a million women now that are that are part of their tribe and who want to be part of this conversation. Um, but this is what I wrote about the perennial. There's a new phrase that was co coined by Gina Pell to describe women like Trisha and me and maybe you. It's perennial and I love it. Perennials are women who are pushing up against their own growing edge and who are transforming themselves and in turn are transforming the world around them. It is about having a growth mindset about reimagining your life and your work, your contribution and your art, and it's about a willingness to always be learning. But being a perennial does not mean that you are always blooming. It means that you bloom and you bloom big, in season, and that you also take the time when it's needed and when it's required to go in, to go deep, to get into the richness of the soil, to learn and to retool and then rebloom again and again and again. So I thought maybe you girls could talk about that downtime, that in between time when, uh, and Trisha, you and I are working on some of these things right now, like you said, collectively. 
Um, but Patty, I, I'd love for you to share also with us, like, what has that been like for you? That, that time when, you know, that we are coming to the realization that we cannot be on, and I don't, at any age, we cannot be on 24 mm seven, -hmm. that we need to take that time to, you know, re-enrich our roots so that we can come back and for our second and third and fourth act and, and do, you know, as I, as I said, this re-blooming. Mm -hmm. So I'd love it if you'd like to share a little bit about your journey into your next act. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, it, you know, it's it's funny because what it feels like to me is that we step on a treadmill and and there we are, we're on it, and you've got to succeed, and your career ought to be here at this place, and uh, you know you should be getting this promotion, and you should be making these contacts, and and here's where you ought to be, and then you know life just has a different plan a lot of times, and. Um, with, we, we lost our son 18 months ago and it was, it's things like that that happen that just kind of like, er, you know, stop you in your, in your tracks and you say, wait a minute, you know, what, what is important? What do I care about? What, um, what is all of this for? And really had to take a step back and, figure out what did I want to do. And one thing that came very crystal clear to me and Sean Marie, you and I talked about this was I didn't want to be on the treadmill anymore. I, it was abhorrent to me. It, it just was like, I absolutely do not want to do that. And, and now I feel like I'm guarding myself against that push to get back on. So in this, this latest incarnation of myself, I'm trying to be of service to, people who have had a similar experience, who have also lost somebody um, through drug addiction and um, child loss and so forth. And, and how do I serve? And I don't even know what that looks like. So this push to run ahead of what is, you know, to, to try to define it when it should be defining itself. It feels like a calling that should find me, not me define what it is so it's very different from anything i've ever done before um very different from any place i've ever been in before it, it feels completely out of my control and and that it's it's driving itself and so that's sort of where i i'm at in this whichever act it is that i'm in is i'm not gonna push this one it will find me it will um it'll reveal itself to me and I'm going to step into it and it'll be the best thing that I've ever done to date, you know, because it will be, uh, it'll be what I'm supposed to be doing, not what I'm forcing to happen. Um, Thank you. That, wow. Um, you know, it's interesting because I, um, I just read something recently about, um, actually not if if you have a vision of what it is that you want to accomplish mm -hmm. not if, if you feel like you already have the answers or it's something you can already do then more than likely it's not something you're going to be successful at um that the people that succeed or actually in your case of what you're doing is going after something of where you you know it's this is bigger of where you want to be able to make an impact and a difference is is and you're in the perfect mindset for it in the sense of like you don't have to be in charge of it you don't have to define it you don't you don't even need to know what it looks like all it is is that you know you're going to do it and you know you're going to make a difference and and as long as you stay in that mindset it will organically unfold in front of you exactly how you aren't seeing it at this time you're not seeing what it's look what, what it's supposed to look like i can't you know imagine how hard that is for you but like in part of your and in a lot of your healing work through that um will be this journey that you're going to go on with it mm -hmm. and help other people you know that but it, it but you're absolutely right you're thinking from what i've recently learned um and a few things that i've read of, of like if you don't have the answer, like you're, you're on the bigger projects in our lives or the bigger 
things that we do, we don't have to have the answer of what it looks like. We just have to stay focused on what it is mm -hmm. and, and let it unfold because it will. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. what it's not. That, or what it's not. That yeah. seems to be what's guiding me more right now as far as um, that doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel like it's taking in the right direction, you know, and it's, um, I'm a, I'm a real planner and a coordinator and a, you know, so that it's a very difficult place for me. So right now it's sort of like gut feeling like, no, that, that doesn't feel good. That feels like obligation. That feels like, um, a corporate demand that feels like something the world is telling me I'm supposed to be that doesn't feel good so exactly exactly of like not listen and I think that the in the broader picture whether it's what I'm talking about what Patty's talking about what Sean Marie has said of like step out of and Patty you've mastered that like really step out of the thinking of of what the what society says we should be doing with it or what a corporation says we should be, you know, whatever the issue is of like what the old paradigm behind these things are. Like let's get new wings with what we're doing. Let's forge a way uh, to really move forward in whatever it is in a completely new paradigm that has nothing to do with the past. It's going to actually pioneer its way into the future. That's what it's going to do. Yeah. Wow. Trisha, I love that you just frame that as pioneering um, because what I, what I think is really beautiful and really, really important to remember is, you know, so many times, you know, we declare something that we want to create or give birth to or bring to the world, you know, through business or art or a combination of both. And so often the very next voice is, well, that's being done already, you know, and I think, oh. right. It's like, Oh, I'm too late. It's already being done. Somebody's doing it better or a hundred other people are doing it better. And so I think with you and with Patty and with the work that I'm doing, and I know that uh, I'm not sure if it's Christine or Kristen um, and Susan are also with us. And, and, you know, I'd certainly love to hear from either of you if you'd like to share, but I think what's really important, what we remember is that we are pioneering our vision of this, of this thing, of this creation. And so Patty, the fact that you are willing, you know, to, to remain in that soil and to stay in that richness of the messaging coming, mm -hmm. um, of not feeling like there is this push or this, um, you know, this thing that you have to, you know, chase or pursue, you are pioneering a path of something that, you know, a lot of people have experienced loss and they need your particular message about this. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, I don't know, that just really hit me, Trisha, when you said that. I just love this idea of us pioneering okay. our own path into a conversation or an arena that others might already be having or that others might already occupy, but we have something to contribute mm -hmm. to that. And there are people who are waiting to hear from us or to see us or to meet us or to experience what it is that we're bringing in that really special way that only we bring it because it's our vision. Mm -hmm. You know, and Trisha, one of the things that I really that I really love and it's so exciting to see you in the midst of this is you identifying after four years that the market that you've been talking to and communicating with and pursuing um, is actually not the market that you want to be in this particular conversation with in the depth that you want to be in the conversation and like you said it's not that the, it's not that you know 20 year olds aren't you know shopping in their mom's closets but that really the, the place that you want to be in and the space that you want to occupy and the the women whose lives you want to affect are actually a different demographic than where you started and the fact that you stayed with it long enough Trisha, to have that awakening and that epiphany um, I mean, I just feel like the, you know, the women that we've included in the chat box and these 
you know, these influencers that you're going to be connecting with, I just, I think that the whole game is about to change for you. But again, well, I, I, you I appreciate that. It. Oh, honey, no, it's, it's right. But that courage that you had, you know, I just, I think that that's really, I think that's incredible. Um, and uh, Susan or Kristen or Christine, again, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but uh, if either of you would like to share um, or have anything that you want to add or have any questions, uh, we've got about 10 more minutes left. Um, and I'd love to hear from you if, if you would like to. It's, it's an invitation, not, not a demand. So Thank you. And I'm sorry I'm blank. I can't for some reason. It says my camera's on, but it's, it's showing black. Um, I don't know. I had uh, technical issues. Sorry. That's okay. I joined a bit late, um, so um, I'm 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 just listening along with everything, um, um, I, and I can't even remember what I signed up for. I can't even remember what the title was. This I just I dashed home and I saw it in my diary, and I had to uh, log on. And I'm loving the uh, I'm loving the conversation. An accidental icon. I I know her. She's I, you know I don't know her personally, but I've seen her stuff before. And I think she's fabulous. And I'm loving the whole reinvention thing because um, that's just something I'm I'm thinking about right now because I um, you know I recovered from breast cancer I got divorced I moved from England where I lived for 25 years to San Diego and um, like this is kind of my permission granted phase. <sighs> Mm. Um, yeah, and just rethinking everything and being really intentional about recreating my life just how I want it. Wow. Yeah. So Welcome. You know, I like, like that phrase, permission granted. That's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and Susan, would, would you like to share with us a little bit about what, like, what or where you're finding yourself drawn or, or what this next journey is? might look like for you or what you might be doing or what you're thinking about wanting to do? Well, I, um, I, I, I was an investment banker for 18 years in London and then I left and I became an executive coach and speaker and then, you know, wrote three books and um, that is what I'd been doing there. But I've come to San Diego and, you know, I've been used to working you know, pretty much on referral. And now I'm here where nobody knows me. And I also, like most of my clients were investment banks and there aren't, there aren't really big corporates or investment banks in San Diego. So I'm kind of in the midst of really thinking about what it is and what it is my message to share. And I recovered from breast cancer, you know, doing, using alternative methods and, um, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not quite sure. Like, I just feel like every day I'm trusting my intuition and meeting new people and I'm just surrendering a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm finding where this goes. I, I, I'm, 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 I, I don't know if I have an answer there. Okay. No, that, that's okay. And I'm so, uh, I'm just so happy that you joined us and I'm, I'm, delighted to hear that you have uh, made it through breast cancer and um, you know it's Thank you. it's so it's so interesting that you know and I, I don't think things really happen by accident I, I had a stroke about 18 months ago and they've been trying to determine for the last 18 months whether I did or didn't and they just recently um, about two weeks ago said that Inclusively, that I did in fact have a stroke, and I'm just astounded that it took them 18 months to figure it out. But you know, I, I think that um, you know, for women who are going through these changes, um, like you said, like you uprooted your life after 25 years and moved, and you know, from living in the same place, and you know, I think that it's really about you know really diving into the things that set our soul ablaze. You know, whether it is writing or painting or sculpting or traveling or, you know, moving to Montana and rescuing wayward dogs or, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, do you know what, you know what I've been doing? I did this, um, are you familiar with the artist's way? 
I love mm-hmm. the artist way. Yeah. I love the artist way. So I did an artist way circle, but the one thing that I've kept is the um, the the date, the artist date. You know, doing something new every week and. I've just, you know, I went mountain biking for the first time in 20 years. Um, I, you know, I went, I was at Big Bear Lake. I went tubing like a 10 year old. I've just been just doing all of these things that I've been going to outdoor concerts. I've just like exposure. I'm just like reevaluating everything, trying foods that I thought I hated, you know, mm. just all these things. I'm thrilled for you. Oh my gosh, I love you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean to get intimate. <laughs> that is just so, that's just so inspiring. Uh, oh, that's so inspiring. Oh. And so, are, are you doing this with a group? No, not anymore. It's it's just it's just my kind of promise to myself. And I, you know, the artist way, the basic, you know, you know, create to live a creative life. You need you need fresh images, and so trying to do something different every week, you know, is a great way of getting unstuck. Um, have you by any chance heard of the Desire Map? No. Yes, I have. I have. Yeah. So I, I just I just put it in the the chat. Um, the Desire Map is really about coming at uh, life and ambition and goal setting from the perspective of first asking ourselves the most what has become the most important question in my life and that is how do i actually want to feel Mm -hmm. and uh it has changed i've been desire mapping since 2014 i think and i'm now a master desire map facilitator um but it's literally changed the way that i do everything Mm -hmm. and so if you get a chance to check out um danielle's site uh, the book was written by danielle laporte or picking up the book um, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's just, it's a game changer. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. No, it's. I it's think really I might good. even have bought that book. It might okay. be someplace. I have hundreds of books that I'm going to read one day. I, I'm right there. I'm right there with you. <laughs> but, but I'm so thrilled that you joined us today, and uh, and thank you for you know sharing so intimately. You know what you've been through and. Uh, I feel like I can speak for all of us. Uh, we're really happy you're here. Thank you. I'm happy you're here too. You're welcome. I'm very inspired. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, Trisha, it is 628, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time, but would you, uh, and I, I put your website up in the in the chat box, but would you like to let everybody know uh, the best way to reach you? And I will, I'll type that out for them. Uh, but if anybody wanted sure. to reach out to you and learn more about the Trisha Grace collection or talk to you about what's next or visit your atelier in West Hollywood, uh, how can they get a hold of you, darling? Um, well, they can always call me on the phone, old school if they'd like to, at 714-342-8888. Um, and you can include my email in there, which um, I don't know if you have or not, but you want you, you want to give? Uh, me? Yes, it's Trisha T R I S H I A at trishagrace.com. Got it. And you can always kind of follow what's going on with my brand at Trisha Grace Collection if you want to look at it on Instagram. And all my silliness there, <laughs> oh, but um, that you're up to. yeah, yeah, Trisha, yeah. I included your website and your Instagram uh, link in uh, in the chat. Yeah, but Sean Marie, thank you so much for giving me the honor to be here with you and these beautiful women today. And um, I walk away way more inspired than I <laughs> than than I did before. So thank you, ladies, for sharing your beautiful stories and just be fierce and follow your dreams and set aside the fear and just do what you want to do. Damn it. Well, you know, and Trisha, if you, if you would like to close us out, if you have any, um, any tips or if you have any advice for the way that you are, you know, tackling, uh, you know, what you call this fear or this illusion, 
um, you know, and maybe leave the ladies with a few things that you're doing to combat that and to get on the other side of it, which obviously you've done because you're still, uh, you're still here. In fact, you, I mean, I'm experiencing you in the middle of a pivot. So um, maybe two or three things that, that you might be able to leave them with. Well, I think, it, I think, is it Susan? I think Susan was the yes. last one that spoke. I think it's like what Susan said is like, I, you know, decided to take this uh, business course that you and I, that Sean and Marie and I are working through together of like, you know what, what am I missing? Um, and then I also um, have tapped into coaching and, um, you know, is I think that finding, you know, and Sean Marie is like, has helped me over the years that I've known her so much in direction and in coaching. And I, I, and in all, and actually in the business course that we're taking together, one of the first things that is mentioned in the course is that, you know, you're never too young, you're never too successful to have a coach in whatever it is that you're doing in your life. And because you do get stuck. Um, and I think trying something new, it's like, just keep on, like, that's what it really inspired me about Susan. She's doing a lot of really fun things every week and adding that I keep procrastinating with. But like, even, even when you're like really trying to be inspired to start this new chapter, whatever it may be of stepping outside of your box, finding it when the fear comes up, finding, a box to put it in with a lid and say, okay, if I have to come back to you later, I know you're in that box, but I'm walking away from you fear right now because I know I've got this. And we've already had to walk, I mean, walk through lots of fear. Like we've already had so much personal, you know, personal, and I'm not just talking business here. Most, our lives are very personal with everything. It's like Patty said earlier, it's, you know, it's, we all have those things that come up in our life. And so just know that you, you have the support to be able to walk through it. I think uh, forums like this are super wonderful and helpful because then we know we're not alone in it. <laughs> and, um, and there's a lot of suggestions. So you, anybody, everybody has my email. Um, don't be, shy to email me if you or call me on the phone if you want to chat like whether it has to do with personal or if there's a business idea or brainstorming like I'm here so um, call me email me beautiful Trisha thank you so much and Patty thank you for sharing your story with us and uh, we're thrilled to see uh, what is going to be happening with the work that you are bringing out to the world and Susan again thank you so much for speaking up and, and coming on you know I'm, I'm just glad that you joined us um, and there's some really great links, like I said, in the chat. And Kristen or Christine, thank you so much for being with us. I hope that this was beneficial to you. And uh, I will be back again next month uh, with another incredible guest. And Patty is uh, leading some additional online forums and Ask Me Anything. And she's doing some really fabulous things during the month as well. So I hope that you will check those out. And I'm just going to leave you with the quote um, that I shared with all of you earlier uh, by James Victoria, and that is, whatever you practice comes to you, so be careful what you practice. So to the practice, to the ritual, to the deep, necessary good work. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye, Tricia. Thank you.